Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici, I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA CyberOps and this is chapter four, network protocols and services. This is section 4.2, ethernet and internet protocol, IPv4 and IPv6. Now, now we move on to section 4.2.2, IPv4. Now, if we think of it, a transport layer, this is layer four, it's getting that data and it's segmented into small pieces. And each segment is given to an IP layer or network layer. Network layer is going to add a header, IPv4 or IPv6 header. And it's just, as far as, a, as, far as IP, is IP or network layer is concerned, it doesn't really understand. It just sees it as a data. And that data, remember that here we have a header. This is a, a transport header, a transport header. It's going to be in there and when it's given to this when it's actually added an ip header this is called a packet so these are called the segments so segment and here we call them a packet packet ipv4 characteristics ipv4 or ip and ipv6 as well ipv4 and ipv6 are unreliable these are connectionless and media independent Unreliable, the IP does not guarantee that, we, that all delivered packets are going to get to the destination. That, that's the job of other, other protocols, like for example, the TCP. IP is the best effort delivery. I don't, I don't like the word unreliable. We can say unreliable, but this is the best effort. Just trying to get the destination. IPv4 or IP is connectionless. Which this means that the source doesn't make sure that if the destination is there or it can re actually receive the packets or is it ready or maybe even understands the packets. It's just going to send them there and hopefully they get to the destination. If one of the packets or few packets they go missing, IP is not going to, it's unreliable. It's best effort. It's not going to resend them. It's going to make sure that, well, other protocols they do the job of reliability and media independent media independent what this means is the ip doesn't really it's not concerned what's the medium it's, it's not concerned if it's a copper or a serial or we have a fiber or, or copper again or wireless here so it's media independent any media ip is fine with it ipv4 packet header now this is ipv4 packet header has two parts we have a ip header and that we have a payload. In the payload is a transport segment, is a transport layer header inside it, as well as the data. This is the called the good put. This is what we actually want to send, but we have to add all these, uh, all these headers to be able to make this uh, data to get to the destination. So when we look inside the IP header, we have a version. This is that defines what version is it, what IP version is it? Since this is IPv4 and this is a four bit, so we put the version as 0, 1, 0, 0. So this, remember, this was representing eight in decimal, the four, two, and one. So for IPv4, we have 0, 1, 0, 0. For IPv6, it would be 0, 1, 1, 0. And then we have a differentiated services or types of services. Um, this used to be called types of service. Now it's called differentiated services. This is the 8-bit field, and it's pretty much all this is for quality service. Right away, we talk about, okay, how far, or what's the treatment of this packet? Is it, does it need to be a better treatment? Uh, does it need to go in front of queue or anything? Then we look at the time to live. Time to live, this is a 8-bit binary value. There is limited lifetime of packet. For example, every time, uh, say we put here uh, 128, 128. Every time if it goes from one hop, this is a router, yeah, it goes to another hop, that's reduced to 127. When it goes to another hop, right, that's reduced to 126. Another hop, 125, and so on. If it reaches zero, we can destroy the packet. So when it reaches uh, zero, so it's kind of loop prevention. If the packet is caught in the loop, it doesn't just keep going around and around. So when it reaches zero, depending on the operating system, some operating system, they put this to 64, some of them 128. You can, uh, with a trace route, it puts it to one and so on. Then the protocol field. This is another eight bit uh, value. Then here we identify what we are carrying. For example, what's inside there. So for example, it say that this is a, a TCP packet, say TCP 
packet. Here we add, for example, in the protocol field will be six. We identify, okay, well, that's a TCP. The payload is TCP. If the payload, for example, is UDP, UDP, we will put here uh, 17, 17 here, and so on. We continue adding different protocol. We identify what's, what we carry, what's the upper layer, what's, the pay, what's inside the payload. And then other important and very important information will be here, it will be source address and destination IP address. So for example, say the source address is from 192.168.1.1 and the destination address, say 192.168, I'm just making up these numbers, the 1.10 for example, we put them in here. Other important information that we have here is the internet header length. Internet header length is how big is this header, just, just this, how big is from here to here. We're looking at the header only. Total length, on the other hand, it talks about how big is this header, including the payload here, including the hole. That's a that's a total length. And let me just clear a little bit here. For example, then we continue with the header checksum. Header checksum. This is used for error checking of the IP packet. Now, if you remember from layer seven, six, five of OSI, yeah. So application presentation session, and then we have a transport layer four, a transport. So this was just data here, data. And the transport layer was taking that data and it was making it into small pieces, like the MTU size, maximum transmittable unit. So what, how much we can send. If, for example, layer three needs to take, say, say it's taking this segment, and that segment needs to, we need to break it into even smaller pieces. Now, if we have to break that segment into smaller pieces, that's called a fragmenting. And we have three fields here. We have an identification. So frag this is 16-bit field that uniquely identify the fragment of the original packet. Then we have a three-bit field, which is a flag, identifies how the packet was fragmented. And then fragment offset, how to put it back together to the destination. So all this is for fragmentation. All this stuff here in the middle, we reserve it for fragmentation. That's in only in IPv4. IPv6 doesn't have this, this fields. Section 4.2.3, IPv4 addressing basics. Now IPv4 is made out of 32 bits, 32 bits in, uh, in a binary format, zeros and ones. And um, for example, with 32 bit different combinations that will just give you above 4 billion, 4.3 billion addresses. Um, if, for example, we have to think about this in the decimal value, we would have to write down 3 billion. This is address converted in decimal. Yeah, so this is a binary converted in decimal. 3 billion, 232,000, uh, 232,238,090. Now, for human, it's really hard to say those numbers. So that's for that reason that we separate the IPv4 into uh, four octets. So remember, when we convert in, this represents one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, just be doubling up, one, two, eight, then two, five, six, two, five, six, five, twelve, one thousand, twenty four, 1024, and continue, yeah, 2048, and so on. But if you convert that, this, so what was that? That was uh, uh, 512, plus eight, plus two, plus whatever that number, 2048, and we continue adding up, that will go, that's gonna end up being 3 billion, 232 million and so on. So for us, it's hard. This is hard to convert. So what we did, or they did, is break the IPv4 into four octets. So easy representation. So for us, for example, now it's much easier to say that, uh, to actually uh, communicate this IP address into four hexets, um, sorry, four octets. So for example, here is 192. This bit is, this bit is represents 128, 128 plus 64 is 192. There are zeros, we don't count them. So this is 168 because 128, this is 128. This is 64, so that's a zero. That is 32, so 128 plus 32, 160. This is 16, so there's nothing in there. Eight, so, 160 plus 8, that's 168 here. And then this is represents 4, 2, and 1. We don't have anything in there. And that's nothing in 1 to 8, nothing on 64, nothing on 32, nothing on 16. 1 on 8, 
nothing on four, one and two, nothing on zero. So eight and two is ten, and same one there. So it's easy for us to say one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot ten rather than three billion and something. You need to understand how to convert this IPv4 addresses into decimal. So for example, take the, any binary address and convert it into decimal. Um, for example, I can give you a challenge uh, while you are uh, at home. What you can do you convert, for example, let's let's take another address. I'm just thinking this out of my head right now. 200.100.5.5. Can you convert that into IPv4 address, into binary? Yeah. If we do it in binary, you can pause the video, do it, and then resume. And we're going to do it together here. So, for example, when we convert a decimal, this is a representation in decimal into binary, we have to look at, uh, for example, we have, let's write here, we have 128, we have 64, we have 32, 16, 8 bits, yeah? Uh, 8, 4, 2, and 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 200, we have to look at the, the lo largest digit, which is 128. If it's lower than our target, our target is 200, then we put 1. So yes, 128 is lower than 200, so we put 1 there. If we did put 1, we have to subtract that 128, so minus 128. So 200 minus 128, so, so 0 minus 8 doesn't go, so 10 minus 8 is 2. Now we have here 19 minus 12, which is 7, so 72 we have left. And then we have a 72, we look at the, the next positional value, which is 64. If it's lower than our new target, we put 1, which is true. 64, it is lower than our new target. So we minus that, minus 64. So we have here 12 minus 4 is 8, we left with 8. 32 is larger than our new target, so that's 0. 16 is larger than our new target, which is 0. And then 8 is the same size, so we put 1 there. So that's equal. If it's equal or lower, we put 1. So 8 minus 8 is 0, so 200, 200, it's 1100000. One, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Then we look at the 100. So 100, for example, you can do this in your own time, but we look at the 100 as well. Let's see it. 1 to 8 is larger than 100, so here we put 0. 64 is lower than 100, so we put 1 there. So 100 minus 64, so we have 6, and 9 minus 6 is 3, 36 left. 32 is lower than 36, so that's why we put 1 there. 36 minus 32, we have 4 left. So 16 is larger, so we put 0 there. 8 is larger, we put 0 there. And then 1, 0, 0. So 100 is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, that's how you convert it. Anyway, the rest you can do it yourself. <laughs> I hope. Well, 5. So IPv4 is made out of two parts. We have a network portion and a host portion. And how we identify what is the network portion, what is so, what is the host portion, we use a subnet mask. Whatever we put one there, that's a network portion. If it's ones, that means it's network, and the zeros is a host. So for example, if you say one, 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 all these three octets are ones, that means it's our network. The fourth octet is zeros, so that means it's a host portion. If, for example, all devices are using the same network as we have here, 192.168.10, that's our network, then all the devices are in the same subnet. So, for example, the devices here to communicate with each other, that uses the same network, 192.168.10. If they have, for example, if they want to con communicate to 192.168.11, that's a different network. So they have to use a gateway, default gateway for that communication to happen. So how devices that will find out what network do they belong is where they use this AND in process, logical AND in operation, where 1 and 1 equals 1. And everything else will be equal in 0. So 0 and 1 is 0, 0 and 0 equals 0, 1 and 0 equals 0. So 1 and 1, or true and true is true, true and false is false, false and false is false, and false and true is false, or, false and, uh, or true and false is false. For example, if we have this IP address, this is our IP address, and this is our subnet mask. So the device to find out what network do they belong, they cannot run the logical AND in process, where 1 and 1 equals 1. 
1 and 1 equals 1. And the rest are zeros, so zeros, doesn't matter what they are here, since there are zeros there, they're going to end up being zero. And we continue the process. So the device finds out, okay, well, since I do this, then I know that my MAC address, we continue if you do it, then I know that my network address is 192.168.10.10. So for example, if I say ping, ping, say I go to the device and I say ping 192.168.11.1. The device is going to do the ending. It's going to use the address that I'm pinging plus its own subnet mask and find out are they pinging on the local network or are they pinging on the remote network. If they're pinging on the local network, they don't use the gateway. They just broadcast for ARP to that IP address. If they use a low, if they find out that it's on the, on the different network, then they will use the gateway, the default gateway. But just so you remember, the device to find out that what network it belongs to, it will run the ANDing operation, where 1 and 1 equals 1, and all of the, all other will be 0. Subnetting and broadcast domain. So subnetting takes the network space in, and divides it into smaller, sub, uh, smaller spaces. They are called subnets. For example, if we leave everything into one subnet, is going to create a big subnetting domain or big broadcasting domain. So, for example, if they are in same broadcasting domain, they are in same network. If one ping, if one broadcast goes, all devices will get that broadcast. But we separate our subnets into we separate our networks into smaller subnets, smaller broadcast, and as well as we can control, for example, who can access who using, for example, ACLs, access control list. As, a, as a, one subnet trying to communicate to another subnet, it goes to the router, router reads the access control list, looks at the destination, and it forwards it. Here, everyone will be on one network, don't have it in the root, there's no ACL going to the router. So anyway, it's going to create a lot of like, security issues if you leave them uh, into one subnet. Thank you for watching section 4.2, Ethernet and Internet Protocols. We talked about IPv4 and IPv6. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. Next video, 4.3, Connectivity Verification. Bye-bye.